follow me with nothing in your name. That's exactly what Anne did. That's what she did. I know. Because I went to their house to make it happen. Yes, that happened. She has nothing in her name. You think she kept a, a dollar and somewhere? No. I trust her she didn't. And I know she did not. Right? And who took the dollar? <laughs> Those who accompanied her to Morristown. <laughs> they had money. Long goodbye. You see, it is relevant, right? Long goodbye. As followers of Christ, we have to be willing to make fundamental option for Christ. I wish, I wish Spain is here. It is for her. An option that by necessity excludes other paths. If we want to follow Christ, why do we fritter away hours in activities that have nothing to do with our faith or the church? What sort of things do we do? What sort of activities are we engaged in if we are truly followers of Jesus Christ? If you, if you really want to follow Jesus Christ, you must, without exception, all your activities must be related towards going to heaven. Nothing, nothing you do has nothing to do with going to heaven. If you truly want to follow Christ. Oh, I want to follow Christ, but I want to go uh, to my husband so that we can further develop the harvest. We can have more fruits. So we can have more properties. So we can have more money. Those sort of things. You understand? That's the essence of Wednesday. Thursday, the 72 other disciples. The harvest. You know, when I was asked, why do you want to be a deacon? Part of the text. Oral. Well, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Mm. That was my answer. Very short. The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. Luke chapter 10. The kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and do not receive you, that's why we don't force anybody. Remember? Shake off the dust under your feet and move on to other places. So the harvest, empty full. Next, full time laborers. Who are full time laborers? The clergy, the priests, the nuns. They're full time laborers in the kingdom for the harvest. What about me? What about you? We are part-time. <laughs> part-time laborers. Okay. You know, if you have if you work part-time, there are no benefits. <laughs> you know that? Right? In any company. Work part-time. No vacation, no this, no that. No <laughs> Okay, who are who want to work for the kingdom part-time? <laughs> you see? There's a lot of lessons to learn, right? Details matter. There are rules that regulate conduct within marriage and before marriage. Sure. Are you living your faith on God's terms or on your own terms? That's a good question to ask ourselves. Friday, the privileged few. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects me, rejects you. I'm sorry, whoever rejects uh, Jesus rejects the one who sent him. The privileged few. Often we see Jesus as the miracle worker, curing the sick, raising the dead. Christ demands a response from the people who have witnessed them. Look, we did not witness any of the miracles Jesus performed, and yet we believe. Right? And there were those who 
those who witnessed, actually, they saw with their two eyes what Jesus performed, and yet did not believe. That's the privileged few. Luke chapter 10. That's why we have the payback time. The not so blessed. Christ gives some of us more than he gives others. Accept the truth. You must highlight this, number two. <clears throat> Sometimes we feel, how come some people are good looking on the outside and they're also very wealthy? And some of us have no money and very ugly on the outside too. <laughs> That's the fact. They're not, we are, you know, they're not so blessed. Christ gives some more than he gives others. That's the fact. Look at Luke 10, 13 to 16. Our conversion must be continuous, daily, domino effect. Look, there's a, uh, uh, <clears throat> the catechism here, uh, paragraph 891, and John 20. For sins you forgive, are forgiven. Those sins you retain, are retained. Infallibility. Obedience to legitimate authority is a form of obedience to God. That one, number one, res respect your leaders. Right? So obedience to legitimate authority is a form of obedience to God Himself. Saturday, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. This is the reason why Jesus spoke in parables. Okay? You must write it down on the side. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. Because God <coughs> have hidden these things from the wise and reveal this to the childlike. If you are childlike, you will understand the parable. If you think you are wise, like those temple leaders, they couldn't see. They couldn't relate. If you are very rich, how can you relate to the plight of the very poor people? You don't know that. Name dropping. There is no salvation through anyone else. Nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we can be saved. Only the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4. Number 2, the ledger. If you know accounting, you understand the ledger. What he deems more important for his disciples is that their names are written in heaven. Is your name written in heaven? It better be written down. You see, your name is not the name in heaven. You know that, right? I told you that. Our names are just earthly names. In heaven, we have different names. Do we know that name? No, we don't. We don't know that name. But when God utters that name, we will zoom up to to heaven faster than the sun. It means we will die. We will die. Once God utters that name, that only God knows. Model son, of course, Jesus Christ. You can read that. Next Sunday is Mark chapter 10. It's about divorce. Next Sunday is about divorce. No longer two, but one. Committing adultery, what God is doing together, no human being will separate from forced adultery. Reading chapter 2, first reading, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. This is used by the other Christians against the church for the celibacy. You see, it's not good for the man to be alone, so let them marry, right? This is used by Genesis chapter 2. 
This is used by the other Christians. A man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. There's a song, and there is love. You know that song? And there is love. The most beautiful is by the two female singers, Marie Lanes and Petula Clark. You know Petula Clark? She sang that song, Beauty. And there is love. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 128, the fear of the Lord. And second reading is Hebrews 2. For a little while was made lower than the angels. Do you know that right now, because we are alive, we are lower than the angels. But after we die and we go to heaven, we will be higher than the angels. You and I will be. Provided we go to heaven, of course. Is that clear? Very quickly, Bible study materials. Go first again. I give you here. I give you here the inspiring article, The Seven Sacraments and Spiritual Warfare. This is like a manual. You see the seven sacraments here, baptism, confirmation, and it explains to you what it does. And what's your responsibility for having received the sacrament? Baptism is enlistment. If you understand the military way, when you get baptized, you have been enlisted to serve. Confirm. You know the, the bishop slaps you in the face? Not really like this. No, no. It's, it's like... Why does he do that? My wife's bishop slapped her and then called her back and slapped her again. Hmm. Micah Murphy. Confirmation included a slap in the face. Okay. I assume they had a prophetic insight into the difficulty and end up giving her. A lot of these guys characters across the country. The survivor passes to end a stage of development. That should be highlighted. Many catechists think that uh, when they're done with their CCD, the, this, this children get confirmed by the bishop. That's the end. They don't go to church anymore after that. You know what? Confirmation is not the end of the development of our faith. It's actually the beginning. Number three, Eucharist. Eucharist are, are rations. You know ration? We get ration with bread and wine. Matrimony is recruiting. It's friendship, recruiting. Holy orders, promotion to officer. <laughs> like, <coughs> Anne is now being promoted to becoming an officer. Six, reconciliation as battlefield medicine. Beautiful, right? Beautiful analogies here. And number seven, anointing of the sick. Anointing of the sick is the pep talk of the general in the military. Quote for the week. I adore and venerate you as much as I ever can, though my love is so full. This is Saint Anselm speaking. <clears throat> Do you have a problem paying attention at Mass? There are 15 ways here. I'm giving you 15 ways to pay attention at Mass. Actually, I don't need this. Not because I'm proud, because I'm doing all this. Of course, there are exceptions, but not because of me. Sometimes I'm late too. <laughs> Pray, sing. Do you sing? When I see you in the mass, I will watch you if you see me. Do you follow along? 
Do you prepare? Do you listen? She thinks I'm sleeping when I close my eyes during homily. Actually, I'm contemplating on what is being said and notes whatever is missing so I know what to discuss here. Listen to the prayers of the faithful. Meditate. Repeat to yourself. Visualize what is being said. Realize what's about to happen as you walk up to communion. Pray. Stay. Mass is, isn't over after communion. And 15. Now, here is probably the crazy suggestion. Stay after Mass and pray some more. Why rush off? The parking lot is going to be crazy. You're not going to get out there for a good 10 minutes anyway. So you might as well pray more. And you can, of course, add this. Okay. It says pray some more, so let's pray some more. 